Kobe Menu's salary has been doubled by Man United and he's now going to be one of those players that I'm going to hate to be really appreciated. We're here to discuss more about this. Welcome to the United Matters channel. Good morning, depending on where you're watching us from. This is Rock and David. You can always call me already on to the United Matters channel. Strictly Man United content is what we do onto this beautiful channel of ours. We are talking Gary Neville, reacting to how United players obviously really operating and Eric Ten Hag and Bruno Fernandes storming the referee that really failed to really issue a red card to the player of to the player of uh, what's the name? To the player of Newcastle, Shea, Fabian Shea, who went ahead obviously put his stud onto the foot of Bruno Fernandes and so much more on to that. Now, we thank God for the gift of life, the Muslims, Barak Laufikum, and let's kickstart it off with the story of Kobe Menu, the latest academy graduate that Eric Ten Hag is going to, to transform into the United starting 11. We've been told that Man United is 18-year-old eight, Kobe Menu will double his wages from £10,000 to £20,000 should he become a regular in the first team. Now, Obviously, to me, I think that's a done deal. It's confirmed. Kobe menu is a regular. But let me bring you up to speed and let me show you how the evolution of this player is obviously making huge rounds all over social media. And his upbringing by Eric Ten Hag is going to have to take him to different levels altogether. Now, on the 9th of February 2023, it was a Thursday. And United really gave this guy a new contract. He signed until 2028 and it was really given a go-ahead by Eric Ten Hag that we should go on and really sign Kobe Menu. And ever since then, Kobe Menu went ahead to obviously make his debut for the Premier League last season when you're playing, I think, was it Leicester City? Leicester City or Crystal Palace, one of those two games. Then he played in the FA Cup that saw, I think it was a game of Reading, he came in there and really played some games. So Eric Ten Hag just knew the plan of Kobe Menu that he wanted to usher him into the team of Man United in the preseason. He played against Leeds, he played against Lyon, he played against Arsenal in the preseason and really had some good games. But in the fourth, I think the fifth game against Real Madrid, he collided with Jude Bellingham and he really got a very bad injury that had that kept him out from I think July to November meaning that he was out for four months and that really put a setback in his career but all in all he's back and we're saying that he's going to hit perform very well in the game of Everton you saw to it that in the game of Newcastle he was one of the outstanding players in the midfield even when played against Galatasaray he really put his body on the line for the club of Man United that is Kobe Menu. and one thing I've going to hate like about Eric Ten Hag is that he has going to hate to change the structure <laughs> at Man United in which they issue deals to these players. Now, to bring you up to speed, do you know that Mason Greenwood was earning £75,000 a week and that raised all that raised from like £10,000 a week and after him having a very good season, they multiplied his salary by seven. You get? No club does that, especially the, a club that really knows that these players are really still young. When you look at uh, Mason Greenwood, by the time he was 17, and why offer him that huge amount of money? No way. No way. You know, all you have to do is to do what Eric Ten Hag is going to tell the board to do. That you offer these players what we call um, performance-based contracts. That's what you offer to these players. <laughs> that is it. Like Falhandro Ganacho, he's earning £30,000 a week. And if at all... If at all that contr if at all he plays very well, then he might see himself earning fifty thousand pounds next season, or at the end of this season. And if at all next season he performs very well, he might see himself earning close to eighty thousand pounds. You know, and after that season performs very well, he might see himself earning one hundred and twenty thousand pounds. Meaning that every season, when a player takes his performance to the next level, even his salary increases. That is it. So. This, this tendency of getting in players and obviously offering them astronomical contracts that see themselves really cost the club a lot are really unacceptable, you know? Like having players like Rafael Varane at £300,000 a week. 
it's not bad for him to be at that amount of money if at all he's really available and really getting himself on the line you know and look at anthony is earning 200,000 pounds a week how why should we bring in a player and give him that amount of money yet at uh, ajax he was earning like 40,000 pounds a week we multiply it by five the ridiculous deal you've ever gonna hate to do and issue a salary to a player is that of jordan sancho he was earning 70,000 pounds a week at Borussia Dortmund and we multiplied it by five. Why would we have to do that for a player that no edit club was obviously coming in out to tussle for? So all those weaknesses are things that Eric Ten Hag is going to hate to really identify and highlight and the board is changing them. And Ten Hag is acting like a sporting director and a technical director. At Man United because John Mata doesn't know how things will work out. Look at the deal that's gonna hate to offer to United young players when they when they went ahead to get into the first team. How does Scott McTominay earn one hundred and forty thousand pounds a week? Do you know that Scott McTominay earns the same amount of money like Lodry? Do you know that? But look at the performance levels, you know? Look at the performance levels, you know? So those are mistakes we've been doing at Man United. Marcus Rashford, how did he go to £200,000 a week before extending his contract or renewing his contract to earn £350,000 a week? You know, there had to be what we call a gradual process of growth, you know, and this is what Eric Ten Hag is bringing at, at Man United. Trust me, if Eric Ten Hag wasn't the manager at Man United, Kobe Mane was going to be given a contract worth £80,000 £80, a week. But... Because of Eric Ten Hag and he knows how to obviously groom these players and he knows the effect of money, especially in that age, he told them, don't do that. We should be doing the following. And I really like that about him. And that's one of the reasons why I believe this guy should stay at the club of Man United for some good years. Because if he can stay at Man United for some good years, lots of things will change. And that's why I've always gone ahead and told you that I don't agree with anyone who says that who who calls in for the sacking of Eric Ten Hag before Sir Jim Ratcliffe comes in, <clears throat> John Cloud comes in the new CEO, and Paul Mitchell comes in as the new sporting director. I want to see Eric Ten Hag working under a very competent sporting director, CEO, sporting director and CEO, and then see how he's obviously going to operate. If he happens to obviously not give us results, then we can really throw him out. That is it. So for me, I would love to see Eric Ten Hag thrive at the club of Man United and get us more players into the first team like Kobe Menu, Honey Ball, um, there is uh, Pelestri, Ahmad Diallo, you know, Alejandro Ganacho. Because ever since I was going to hit to come in through, you've seen that we have players that are close to five or six from the academy coming in through the likes of Dan Go are really doing magic at the club of Man United. So... I really like that and I love what Eric Ten Hag is doing. I don't know whether you guys are okay with it, but I'll see what your reactions will be into the comment section. Then Gary Neville, after the game of Newcastle, I was going ahead and spout fire. He has said, I'm tired of my own club. I don't want to play I don't want to play their games anymore. I don't want to watch their games anymore. And that's the saddest criticism you can make of your club when you get tired of watching them. Now, I wonder why these people are coming in through to put in such a narrative in the media when you've gone ahead to lose to Newcastle. Why? You know, what have, why haven't they been saying this when you're winning? So, it looks like they believe that we should be doing all this. I understand the players are wrong. They're not going to hate, obviously, put in a lot of effort like Rashford. They've down tools, you know. But all you have to understand is that United is in a process. If I would ever meet Gary Neville, I would go ahead and ask him this question. <clears throat> How were players that Eric, that Ferguson was managing in his second season at Man United in the season of um, 1987 to 1988 performing? I would love to ask that. I would love to ask that. You know, sometimes I want to judge a manager when I was going to hit, obviously, do what we call a complete overhaul in his team. You know, like for Eric Ten Hag, I believe... After the summer of next day, if at all Ten Hag is not sacked, he will have almost 70% um, of the players at the club of Man United 
under his control because we're going to have to bring them in and really take them to the next level. And I think this is the cycle that we are supposed to break. We are supposed to try out something that we're not going to do in the different eras of different managers like Louis Van Hal, Jose Mourinho, and Ole Gunnar Solskjaer because no manager at Man United has going to head to obviously complete three seasons or three summers. When you look at when you look at Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, he brought in players in 2020, sorry, in 2019. That was Harry Maguire, Daniel James, and Aaron Wan Bissaka. Then in 2020, he brought in Donny van de Bink. Uh, he brought in Cavani. He brought in Facundo Pelestri, Ahmad Diallo. He brought in um, Alex Tellez um, and Donny van de Bink. So in 2021, um, Oligona Sosia brought in Jordan Sancho. Rafael Veran, um, Cristiano Ronaldo, right? Those are the three players he brought him through. And when you look at the team that he was gonna that he had gonna obviously play with, he had gonna hit obviously the need for. And if at all he never got sacked, though he was the case of his own sack, and he got a fourth transfer window. Trust me, would have gonna hate to really have ninety percent of the players under his control because we're going to have to be responsible for bringing them at the club of money that, that is all you're going to social for you so i understand exactly what people are really talking about but uh let's also really give this manager time and let's go ahead and obviously look at what is not okay at the club of money united and let's start judging this manager when this takeover stuff is done because i'm also fed up of it you know we are told Sergio Mrakliff was going to talk over the club of man united football operations all duties monday this week that was yesterday and yesterday we got stories that it's not going to be announced this week it's going to be announcing it's going to be announced next week all those uncertainties are really affecting the club of man united if at all you never knew so we should obviously continue doing the needful and really take it to where we deserve to be as a club of manchester united now lastly let's talk a little bit about how eric ten Hag and bruno fernandez went ahead and stormed the referee robert jones after the game and this is rob dawson is a united correspondent for the for the um for the espn he has told us that man united were upset with the referee sorry with the referee robert jones decision known to send off fabian Shea during the defeat to newcastle eric ten Hag and bruno fernandez visited robert jones in his room after the game to ask for an explanation following a challenge on bruno on bruno fernandez by Shea in the second half and this this was really a red card and this is where you ask yourself where was var look at that foul that was a straight red card because he went ahead obviously leave the ball and he went for the leg of bruno fernandez if you remember the foul or the foul that saw marcus rashford get sent off as we played against copenhagen this was even worse than the other but the player was not sent off and i really guarantee you that if any other player did it in the next games you're going to see it that player is going to be really shown a red card and var obviously coming through and obviously intervene so i think var needs to style up and obviously get us consistency into this game so guys thank you very much for watching through your reactions to kobe menu salary to be doubled by man united are welcome in the comment section below what do you make about gary neville fed up of man united and doesn't want to watch it again and eric ten Hag plus bruno fernandez storming the office of the referee that officiated the game of newcastle versus man united as they complained on fabia Shear not being sent off the field of play as he really went ahead to really step on the foot of Bruno Fernandes. May the living to God bless you abundantly. The Muslims, Barak Laufik, Murok, and David remains my name. A sign out for now. See you later, my lovelies.